All right, good morning, Gap Hill Speed Shop special guest Blair Pletcher on weathering technique that he has mastered, and he's going to walk you through the entire process of it and see how it goes. Blair. Okay. Um, what I start off with uh, to get you guys started is all my supplies. I'll start with a generic paper towel. Always keep them handy. And what I do is I will fold it in half and fold it in half again because we're going to be using that a lot. Um, the paints I use are the uh, craft acrylic paints. Um, I typically try to use folk art but sometimes you know the colors I'm after they don't have so I end up with like this one's Apple Barrel. Um, the brands don't seem to matter just the colors. The colors are very important. Uh, I'll start off with uh, what's called burnt umber um, and it's a very deep brown color followed by uh, a color called terracotta when I open these up you'll see what they look like uh, in the colors and the last one I'll go over it with is uh, teddy bear tan um, and I've tried other tans I've tried other colors this one works the best um you guys will be shocked once everything's rusted and then i go over it with this you'll be amazed at how what a difference it makes so those are the colors that i use i have a lot more up here um depending on what type of rust job i'm doing but those are the primary colors i start off with um they also sell them in a eight ounce bottle only the uh uh, burnt umber um, but I use that a lot so that's why I have that okay the brushes I use I don't spend a whole lot of money on brushes these are from uh, I believe Walmart um, and then I keep a little glass jar cup whatever with water in it um, just to keep my brushes clean generally they stay in there I have these out to show you which ones I'm going to be using. I also have, now these I got at Hobby Lobby um, for doing really fine streaks um, where the rust is running down, that kind of stuff. This is a tiny, tiny brush. I don't even know what size it is anymore. Oh, wait a minute. Here it is. Uh, it looks like 1070. Anyway, it's very, very tiny. Uh, hardly any little bristles. So I'll use that one also. Uh, but these are basically the brushes I'm going to be using today. Um, they're simple. Uh, like I said, Walmart carries them. You buy them in a pack. You get like, uh, I don't know, 10, 12 different sized brushes. So the body I'm going to be doing is the 48 Ford uh, Chopped uh, Custom, I guess they're calling it. I glued on... Uh, the little front piece that I wanted to use and went ahead and painted it, sanded everything down, painted it um, and then I did the black where I want black um, did the black inside um, also did the door jams trunk um, I will put, if the car is going to have color on it, I will put that color on first um, simply because it's, it's my opinion, you know when cars are made, they're painted and they have a color then they rust um, so that's why I do that um, another thing I do which you guys may think is a little quirky and silly and stupid but it's what I do all my builds have a story behind them um, and it helps me kind of get an idea in my head of where I'm going with the build what I want to do to it and how it's going to look so again this one story is it was uh you know it's a 48 ford so in the 50s early 50s maybe somebody chopped this and customized it and then it sat nobody did anything with it then somebody bought it and turned it into like a retro rod so that's the theme i'm going with on that so all right we're going to get started here i'm going to start off with this uh brush here um I've, you can use just about any brush you want as long as it's not ridiculously stupid like 
one of these. Um, I don't know if you can see this or not, if John wants to pan out, I have hundreds of brushes. <laughs> um, so that's where we're going to start. Shake this up. And depending on how much gets in the cap, I'll just dab it out of the cap. Okay, I want to get a lot of paint on that brush. And what happens, This these paints are a little self-leveling. So you're going to have to repeat this process. I always start on top and work my way down. So just be creative. I'm just imagining where the rust would appear. Water would be settling. And running toward the corners is basically what it will do. And I just sit there and dab it like that. Get more paint. Leave a little bare spot there. It may look like I'm putting a lot of paint on here, but like I keep saying, it's self-leveling. Believe it or not, this will flatten out. Um, another thing I do, I have a blow dryer here next to me on my bench. I will use the blow dryer to dry this paint to speed up the process. Um, so I can get one of these done pretty quick. And I'm hoping that that's the, what we're going to do today. Since we're trying to make a video and we don't want to take all day to do it. But, you know, just be creative with it. There is no real right, or right way or wrong way to do this. Um, but just kind of keep in mind of what's going to rust first and what isn't. Um, now I'm kind of doing a, this is going to have surface rust on it. On this build. So, um, if I was doing a complete rusted out model I would get my Dremel out first and start making holes before I did any of this okay all right so what I'm going to do now is grab my blow dryer that I got for Christmas crazy but she got tired of me using hers so Santa brought me a new blow dryer um, it works out nice because like I said I can dry this paint and keep going otherwise you know you've got to wait for paint to dry these paints tend to move around on you when they're wet um, if you have a slick surface um, like an unpainted body um, these paints will kind of slide around so to speak what I'm doing here is I'm just dabbing this on and I'm just trying to build up texture um, and I, I have to do this multiple times depending on how much texture I want because they will flatten out Um, on flat surfaces like roofs, fenders, trunks, um, you want to build up more of a texture than you will on, say, like the sides of the car. Fenders, um, doors. Um, now, at the bottom of the door line and stuff, I will put a little more on there simply because that's where water is going to always accumulate. And it'll rust a little more there than just about anywhere else. Okay. You can see there where I dabbed on it and it pulled pulled it up. So. That's from it not being completely dry. Um, 
Another thing I tend to try to do is when I'm doing my build up, I don't know if you guys can see this or not, I'm kind of staying in the middle, leaving the edges uh, not as much paint build up. Um, there's a reason for that. Uh, I've, I've noticed at various junkyards and weathered vehicles that the uh, rusted panels, like say this rust pattern here, will be more in the middle and less as it works its way out. So that's what I'm trying to create when I'm doing these. Um, got a little blob of something there. Okay, let me dry this again. Okay, and I'll take a look at it. I'm still going to need more, so one more will do it, I believe. It'll give me a nice little texture to work with. I'm pushing down on this brush pretty hard. Um, I don't know if you can hear that or not, but, you know. I'm, I'm not being that gentle. I, I want to get as much paint on here as I can. And build this up. The reason I like using these paints and using a brush I have complete control over where the rust is, how much there is, and what it looks like. Um, I've tried the salt technique, I've tried the hairspray technique, and they're nice, but you don't have any control over where the rust is, how much there is, and really didn't care for it. So. I played around and played around and came up with this method and it works for me. Alright, I can see now that I'm starting to get a a nice build up of paint here. Get some more on the back edge there. That little jar is almost empty. Okay. I'm gonna put some down here too. of that with smaller brushes. Hit the top of this again. Get off of there. Okay. Pop that in the jar.